go to ban that Draven against them, and as yeah. you see, gonna be the first one. But the real thing is, you want to take away the junglers, but also you have to watch out for the mid laners. Bjergsen, we know he is a playmaker for his team. So is the test. Like you have a lot of bands you want to use for the wolf side, and of course for the wolves towards the dragonborns, you got you got the AD carry out right there. You want to make sure you keep Shushe out of it, and then potentially Maluno, because Maluno can really be a huge playmaker for their team. He's done in the past, mm -hmm. but Shushe is like the one you really want to target and lock down with this. We haven't seen a Thresh ban just yet, but we both know that uh, Movert and Deficio can play him. Yeah, and we've seen the uh, Cassidy and Zed banned out there by Dragonborns towards Bjergsen, basically. Uh, we saw him early on in the season with Cassidy, incredible stuff, making quadra kill after quadra kill in those games before he finally got a pentacle yeah, uh, kill on Syndra, um, which was the first one that he made. Uh, Kazix, the final ban out for the Wolves. Not one going to let uh, Shushe or maybe even uh, Yamato Cannon have that one. So what's the final ban going to be here for Dragon Ball? It's got to be a jungler. And as I say that, it's Thresh. You left Jarvan open. Like, we've said this time and time again. Like, why do you keep letting the Wolves get Jarvan? As you see them block yeah. in right away. Spencer is just so good on him. He's going to create so many opportunities for your team. Hopefully, they have a counter that, because if you don't, they're going to walk all over you. As they are hovering over Elise, which, I mean, we saw it play to support yesterday. We've seen it in the jungle with Giants. It could be in the top lane, like we see it with Gambit. Not exactly sure where that would go if they do lock it in. Yeah, and Varus, a an AD carry which Hosan has played a fair amount of. Now he's he's a very aggressive AD carry, so oh, yeah. he really loves to bait out those barrier fights. Um, and you know the way that Varus works, he can put a lot of damage down, uh, or, you know, an unexpected amount of damage just due to the fact that you know he's got that uh, his stacks of blight that he right. can pop to do an instant burst. Yeah, you really it's really unexpected sometimes. And when you work it well with any team that has decent AOE lockdown, like the Gallo they're sitting on or a Mumu. That chain of corruption is going to spread. It's going to lock down the team, and you're going to have a really nice team fight for you. But we do see Shen actually locked in, which obviously would be on God, bro. I mean, that's if it's not Shen, it's going to be Singe most likely for him, yeah. if not Nidalee. And then Bjergsen actually locking down that Twisted Fate. So we've seen some amazing Twisted Fate play last week. We've seen it just completely win games for teams. I mean, you have to say because of the interaction with the other lanes. We'll see how well Bjergsen does with it here. Of course, the Wolves with the last two picks, they need a support. They need an AD carry, and it's not very often you see them leave those last two or those champions up last. Yeah, and if that was Dragonborns that did that, I would almost expect something funky to be coming out <laughs> in these last couple of weeks. But I don't think we'll see the same here from Copenhagen Wolves. Uh, you know, Ezreal is in there, one uh, a champion that Tess has played a lot of misfortune. I'm guessing it's going to be one of those two. Looks like Lulu is going to be the support here for Deficio. Well, we have to look at it this way. Ash is a possibility. We have Global Presence team. Tess doesn't really play him too much, but having the Shen, having Twisted Fate, I mean, you're going to be around the map like crazy. If you throw in an Asher with that, you're really never going to know where you're going to get hit from from that team. As he does lock it in, okay, I feel, I feel, a, little, I feel a little good today. Maybe that crystal ball's working for me for once. Um, but they do lock in the Lulu, so you have good protection, but that global presence of the Wolves team is just ridiculous. Only problem is they might potentially lack a little bit of damage as we get into the late game, just because they don't have a third damage type of champion, unless uh, Godbrew builds maybe a Trinity Force. So what are Dragonborn's going to go for here against Twisted Fate? Uh, Diana, I guess, is a possibility. We've got Kha'Zix and Zed are both out of the running for this one. Obviously, uh, banned one by each team. We've seen Shushi play Diana before. He likes to get involved in other lanes, which fits Diana's style perfectly. We've got Lux in there, which also um, we have seen from Shushi. The thing is, if you're against a Twisted Fate, you need someone that can push the lane really quickly to punish him when he leaves the map. He might be running Teleport to kind of counter that since you're against a pretty much triple global team, but I'm not sure if he's going to be running that Elise or if that will be a, a support Elise because she's not too great in pushing the lane at all. But we will see what they lock in here. Well, they're running it right ah. down to the wire, and it's going to be Shushe's uh, famous Gragas. We saw it in Season 1. That's what he was famous for. Uh, and obviously, I just want to point that out as well, the, the, the um, Azuba Taipei Assassin yes. skins, which look amazing, awesome. by the way, I have to say. Shushe Gragas skin. There's still hope, maybe. So Gragas has really long hair. To see that one. I mean, he's cosplaying. It wasn't quite gragas -esque. It was just an empty water bottle, and, you know, he just unzipped his jacket bit weird, but also uh, <laughs> kind of cool as well. Uh, but Shushe obviously played a lot of Gragas in season one. He he was he was the Gragas player. Is it kind of weird that I, in my head, when you mentioned his skin... If it's in your head, it's probably weird, <laughs> Jason, yes. <laughs> so true, but the thing is, I imagine him throwing his dog. I don't know why, as a barrel. <laughs> I don't know. But we do have it locked in, and to change subjects a little bit, we'll talk about Should've North left America. Should have left that oh. one there. But we had Prawley of Complexity play phenomenal Gragas this last week. They, they even mentioned they've been playing him strictly in that middle lane just to know it can counter teams really well. 
And we'll see how uh, how good Shushi has it, is at it. As we know, in Season 1, he was uh, a phenomenal Gragas player. Yeah, and I can't see that being really any different this one. You can see the Dragonborns spirits high by the looks of things. Hosan, all the, you know, he's always laughing. It I looks think. like he's laughing at if me. You put, if you put, he probably is laughing at you, like the rest of <laughs> chilling for a bit you know having that that holiday that honestly some of these players really probably need by this stage of the season uh, so i'm interested to see how the wolves come out you know they have fallen behind against all authority now but only because they've not played any games this is their chance uh, and against the bottom team they'd be probably calculating this game as a win i, I know they've actually been practicing quite a bit i've seen the test and Deficio duo queuing a lot uh, Sven Scare and Godbro have been working on their, their synergy as well. And Bjergsen, I mean, come on. He's always practicing if he's not playing right now. But we do have the game starting and getting underway, Joe. And I'm excited to see what happens because this is the first game of day two of the Super Week. So here we go then. Copenhagen Wolves versus Dragonborns. Level one, Jason. With the setups that we've got here, can we expect any action? If, it, if we do, I will have to say it will most likely come out of the Wolves. You have that taunt, you have the attack speed or the armor pen out of uh, out of Jarvan, you have the stun out of Twisted Fate, and then you have that pretty much guaranteed crit strike out of the Tess, who went with the Doran's Blade for that extra attack damage, and then the slow off of Lulu. They are kind of sitting over towards the top side of the map right now, so it looks like they want to potentially invade. You know, Nazis, he normally goes for red right off the bat and swings around to blue, so they might be trying to stop that. This is interesting here as all of Copenhagen Wolves headed to that top side of the map. Uh, Yamato Kani is actually inside of the brush and you can see that he backs away as soon as he sees Twisted Fate come in there. Not sure that they actually spotted Yamato Cannon actually backing off there. See what I love right now? If you check out the mini map, the ward coverage. So the Wolves, they put down a ward on the Wraith brush so they know if uh, Dragon Wards are going to invade it off from their invade, like try to counter it in some sort of way. They know that's not happening right now. So it looks like they're just going to back off instead and just force Dragon Wards to play a little passive, maybe even invest a couple of wards they don't want to on their side of the map. Yeah, lots of wards down for the Wolves. Three at this point, as you said, one by that Wraith Bush, one on the top side, and then one in the top tri bush as well. So Wolves got very good map vision right now. I'm going to be kicking things off here with the Wolves. Ironic. Um, <laughs> and that lane swap, of course, going to be coming in. We are going to see Lulu and Ash going to top. I was almost expecting Dragon Wars to start a dragon then off of that. But, you know, we do have, if you check out items right now, this is kind of reminiscent of what we've seen in North America a little bit. We see four red pots start for Dragonborn. So, you know, they want some early aggression. They want to win their lanes early on. And even Mover picking up one as well. So there's going to be a lot of aggressive actions from both teams. Yeah, really interesting stuff. And now that also gives them that safety if they were to get invaded upon as well. Like that's a lot of health boosted yes, into that fight yes. along with the stats, of course. You can never count those out from that pot. So we are going to be seeing 2v1 lanes. Renekton against Lulu and Ash. And you can see there Renekton already being harassed down to half HP. He's going to be burning through those four health pots that he has very, very quickly. Bottom lane is going to be Shen versus Elise Varus. Uh, now, obviously, Elise does have that lockup early on out of the cocoon. How are these two solo lanes going to fare up against each other? Who's going to have the better time of it? Well, looking at it, I, I have to say I give it over to the Wolves in that top lane because Renekton... Actually, no, I, I'm going to take that back because Renekton has a lot more sustain than a Shen has. I mean, with that Q when it's empowered, you can stay alive quite easily. You have a lot of AoE to farm easily under the turret. So if Dragonborn shoved the lane into Shen, he won't be able to farm under turret that well. So they should win that trade in the end. But it all really comes down to you know how the junglers interact and who tries to go for an early turret. Well, as you can expect, Copenhagen Wolves here freezing that lane out as much as they possibly can here. Ash already up to 15 CS. Renekton got one, Shane got zero currently. So you can see how much of a, uh, how passive they're playing that one, not wanting to come off that turret whatsoever. But now Yamato Cannon's finally going to have at least a chance uh, to get in here and pick up some of these minions. Let's we'll see how that works, because we do have three health pots and two mana pots on the Fisio, so it looks like he wants to harass a lot and really force Yamato Cannon back. Even when he's under that turret, he can do a couple of damage maybe take a turret hit and then you know heal it right back up as they are doing a qu quite a good job at it as you see not one cs has been picked up for godbro yet yeah godbro definitely struggling with that one yamato kind of you know, taking a lot of harass on the turret, and that's the beauty of lulu as well it's like renekton's gonna go and last hit that minion i'm gonna hex him and then he can't do anything about it and that's the problem that he's had there is yamato kind of does finally come away we see the hex coming down again and Yamato Cannon going very low, didn't pop his elixir though. And now he's out of health pots. He has two running at the moment, but that just shows you how different the lanes are going. I kind of had him winning his lane uh, compared to Godbro, but Godbro still has three health pots left, still has his red pot. Yeah, he is up three CS currently, but we are going to see uh, Maluno come up towards the top side just to make sure he can farm a little bit. And this is what we see happen yesterday. We've seen happen quite a bit. It's just that junglers are trying to get a little bit of uh, early levels 
and just make sure the soul laners who are in a 1v2 situation can keep up, keep up and farm. And there was Move It. He just come up towards that Riverside. And actually, there's uh, Shushi going in on towards Bjergsen. He's going to take a stun card for his pleasure, though. And Bjergsen will be uh, definitely happy with that one. 30 to 25 CS currently for Twisted Fate in that middle lane. You can expect it after all, Gragas is at the end of the day a melee champion. Yeah, and the thing is, we're going to see very high numbers from both these uh, two players in the middle lane because both of them farm extremely well. You yeah. know, the barrels that are shooting once you get a little, of AP, little bit of AP, you can full clear a wave with uh, your body slam, as well as the uh, the red card and the wild cards out of Twisted Fate. But it all comes down to that level six. Will Bjerg interact with the top lane, with the bottom lane, and really try to create some opportunities? And time will only tell. Well, right now Maluno is still waiting around in that top lane, trying to give the Yamato Cannon the time to get some farm down from this one. You've always got to be careful with that Wither in there, something that they can't underestimate at this point. Uh, but Copenhagen and Wolves definitely should be safe in that one. Jarvan did leave uh, Shen down in this bottom lane on into his own devices here. And he's just trying to get in there. You can see every now and then just edging forward, throws that Vulpal Blade, and then he's like, ah, I'm going back to the tower now. <laughs> that was far enough. Yeah, that's true. And... Well, I mean, the thing is that like, Shen will be six relatively soon. Like once that giant mini wave pushes in within the next one, it'll be level six. We'll have Bjergsen hit level six relatively soon as well. And the test who, uh, you know, will be there in a couple of ways in a couple of minutes. When that happens, like that's the go time. Like that's when Dragonborns are like, oh crap, we need to play a little bit passive because they can get around the map so quickly. They can interact with each other so well. And I'm curious to see how well the Wolves have been practicing this and how well they can pull it off. Because it's not easy to really work with a team like this. Like, every player has to know how to work with the Twisted Fate, how to work with a Shen, how, work, how to work with an Ash. Right, if we look at the CS between Shen and Renekton, actually 13 to 12 now, which you have to give that credit over, as we are going to see Twisted Fate coming into this top lane now. Can Yamato Cannon get away from this one? The stun card lands, then we are going to see Nasus getting involved, but Yamato Cannon is burning here from the Ignite. That won't be enough to finish off, but the stun card will be coming out of Bjergsen. First Blood Wolves. Just as we talked about level 6 happening, we see the first game happening right there, and a beautiful player, Deficio, off the bat right there. He sped up Bjergsen, so he didn't have to commit his flash right away to get that gold card. He got it with that, was able to save the flash a little bit later and help secure that first blood. So Wolves, great start them up a thousand gold now and Shushe wasn't able to punish that trade either I mean he's, he's tied in CS but he wasn't able to get too much damage onto the turret so here's a question for you Jason I mean we've got two almost global present champions in there obviously with Shen who could with that stand United move across the entire map Twisted Fate who is pretty much in there as well is Shushe gonna go into him here there is the body slam landing the barrel will land as well and Bjergsen in a lot of trouble as he gets that stun card down but no Shushe mana. doesn't have mana and that's gonna mean that he can't follow up and look what he blew for that he blew flash and ignite trying to get the kill on Bjergsen who didn't have anything available and Bjergsen was still able to escape right there so a good job by him to know his limits and unfortunately for Shushe just didn't have that mana to do that one more body send to pick up that kill and overall just well played I mean that was very scary because you can look at these mid laners they can burst each other down pretty quickly so back to my question uh <laughs> we might see more action after this one I know you had problems with free yes, when you I were did. trying to get stuff out and there was action but that's fine by me as well um do you think that Shunji should have gone with Teleport this time around with the fact that there's Twisted Fate and Shen in that lineup? Sure. Well, the thing is, they're running an Ignite on Yamato Cannon and Move It already, so I don't think his Ignite is very crucial, uh, especially since you don't really have a lot of, or you don't really have any healing at all over for the Wolves, minus the uh, Q off of Shen and the, you know, Vampiric Scepter off of anyone who picks it up. I think it would have been a good pickup, because right there, he could have teleported to the top lane where that ward was. He could have countered that gank with his ultimate and then kept uh, Yamato Cannon alive. It might have worked out really well for them, but. You know, we'll see how the Ignite works out for him as the game goes on because it can be very crucial. I mean, that 400 true damage it, it does, you know, around level 18 can really hurt a team. Let's have a look at the uh, items that are coming in here. I can get my words out. Uh, in the early stages, we've got Spirit Stone being picked up for Nasus with Boots, Crystalline Flash, pretty standard stuff there. And the Madrid Razor for Jarvan as well. Middle lane, both players gone with those early Sorcerer Shoes. Two Doran's rings for the Twisted Fate and the single one for Gragas. This Twisted Fate is going to come into this top lane once again. There's the arrow as well. You're not escaping this one, Yamato Cannon. Slowed down completely. The test gets a final blow. And we talked about Twisted Fate being so impactful in or last week's games, and you've seen it yet again. Two ganks in the top lane, two successful ganks now. And Hosan rotates heavy low as Godbro's being harassed under this turret. The turret is very low as well. They could go for a dive. Yeah, but you are going to surely see the first turret of the game going down here. There it is, finished off by Hosan. Dragonborn's not wanting to go too deep into that though, uh, but maybe they will turn this into a dragon. Yeah, speaking of that, we do have Godbro is backing, so he's going to heal up. He has the ultimate available, and we have uh, Jarvan, we have Twisted Fate in the vicinity to help out. Obviously, Ash and Lulu on the top are not going to be able to help, but they might be able to stop this. 
Well, there is the wild cards going through. Dragon got about a quarter of his health left. Is Shushi going to take a lot of damage from this one? There's Cataclysm going down. The kills start to come in. It's one for each team currently, but Bjergsen is still chasing down. Stun card lands onto Mover. He gets the kill. Can Maluna run away from this one with that ghost running? Bjergsen needs to pop the stun. There is the stun card. Maluno in a lot of trouble. One more hit will do it, and it will come down from Twisted Fate in the end, who fancies his chances now on towards Hosan. Needs to be careful of that turret. Is God Bro goes right under it as well. Hosan trying to bait him out with this one. And Godbro, honestly, I think he could have maybe finished off that kill there, but he didn't want to even risk that. Oh, Bricks is going to try to go for a nice wild card. He's, ooh, so close to him on that bottom lane. But we saw a great play out of Hosan right there. Popping a red pot, actually. It, it kind of made the Wolves commit a little bit too much right there. Expecting to get the kill, but it was a great play on him to stay alive. But still, Wolves lost Dragon. They lost one member, but they got three kills, and they got the top turret off of that. So a very favorable trade for them. Yeah, they're now five one up in kills and are 2.2 thousand gold in the lead. So a nice little uh, bit of play that they're going for, yeah. Obviously, uh, Shushin got a bit of time now to uh, farm in this lane before Twisted Fate actually comes back up. But you have to say, Bjergsen, 4-0-1 up until now. Twin Shadow is his first big item out. Yeah, we can just say just Bjergsen. That explains it all. I mean, he's been playing entire, er, extremely well the entirety of LCS, but that Twin Shadows, that item is, is so perfect for him as well. So you have slows off of Lulu, you have slows off of, off of Ash, and now you have a slow and stone off of Twisted Fate. So you're never going to escape them when he comes in for a gank. And we'll see how well he works with that item as uh, as we do see more ganks coming uh, coming in eventually. Yeah, really interested to see how that impacts on this game. Ash, of course, is also 1-0-1. One, one. BF Sword, Berserker Greaves, Pickaxe. Compare that over to Hosan, who's gone BF Sword, Vamp Scepter. And uh, also got those Tier 1 boots of speed in there as well. And the thing I like about the Wolves' lineup, you see the test, he went cleanse. So if he ever gets withered by Maluno, he can use that to get out of it. Obviously, he can get out of the stun, out of Renekton, and get out of the cocoon, get out of the uh, ultimate, out of, out of Varus. But they have a really good team at protecting him, so he doesn't really need to blow that on a wither necessarily, or if he does, he's not going to be really too harassed by any of the damage Dragonborn's going to put out. But we do see him going for a 5 and push here on this middle turret, and with the wave clear Bjergsen has with that blue buff, with the red buff, and Lulu there, I'm not sure they can really do anything about that. And then you have Ash pushed in the bottom lane, so that should be another turret for the Wolves. Yeah, Ash going straight through on that one. There is five men in middle, though, for Dragonborn, so as you said, there's not much left of the wave by the time it gets anywhere near to that turret. Dragonborn's trying to force them back as well. The poke coming out constantly here from Twisted Fate. And look at that. The test is... I was going to say that turret's taking a while to go down, but the next time we have a look, it's actually going to be taken out there in the end as the Varus ultimate was actually whiffed there from Hosan. Didn't connect onto anyone. They're still doing damage onto that turret, but Copenhagen Wolves, they're going to try and push back a little bit from this one. And the fact is that Ash is pushing bottom. Shen's pushing top. Something's got to move here for Dragonborn, they can't stay around the middle. Something has to give. It's see a giant wave bottom right now just pushing up. And you know Hosan, he wants to get that farm. But now the Wolves, they're on the aggression. They want to push this turret and get some damage onto it and potentially take it down. Yeah, that would be uh, a cruel twist of fate. If they managed to get down this outer turret, that was actually accidental, so apologies for that one anyway. Um, well, that would be horrible for them. The fact that they've been trying to siege that middle turret, they've given up that bottom turret for it. And then if Copenhagen Wolves had managed to have uh, come back and take that one, would have not been the best news for Dragonborn, who already find themselves four and a half thousand uh, gold at this point behind. So not really the best position to be in. If you look there at the overall gold, see it's almost a thousand in that mid lane, despite the fact that Gregus has the CS lead. Twisted Fate, of course, has been all over the place. He's currently at 4 0 on 80 carries, around about an 800 gold lead for the test. Yeah, that Twisted Fate pass is really coming into play. And if you mix that, that in too. with uh, the test's talk shot, which gives him extra gold per minion kills anyways, he's getting a lot of gold. Currently three for every, or extra three for every minion kill. So he's going to be ahead of host on this entire time, which he's already ahead in CS. He has a kill, has assist under his belt. He just, just leads and bounds beyond, uh, beyond him. And the thing is, the Wolves, they have two Giants belts already. They have one over to Svenskaren, one over to Godbro, who's building into a Sunfire Cape. Like, they have their tanky members getting tanky. They have their damage getting very heavy in damage. And it's just really hard for Dragonborns to deal with that when they haven't really picked up any major items yet. Yeah, everything going to plan, that's for sure, for the Copenhagen Wolves. And look, 
very strong. We didn't know what to expect from them today, uh, just due to the fact that, of course, they've had those weeks off. Uh, but certainly nothing seems to have changed since we were, uh, you know, praising them in those previous weeks where they were looking very good as well. And we see Gragas and uh, Nasus coming into this mid lane. Actually, Shushi going to engage here on towards Bjergsen, but here's the counter engage. What a flash out of Bjergsen. He avoided the cocoon. He avoided the virus ultimate as well as Yamato can. Going to pop his ulti. The test going very, very low here. Wild growth will keep him alive as Bjergsen gets a stun down on towards Hosan. But there is the rest of the Copenhagen Wolves starting to close in. They are going very, very low as Muva is going to get stunned up from this one again. He got a repel off. And now they're chasing in towards Renekton into this north side of the map. Yamato kind of not going to escape this one. It's a double kill as Bjergsen is going to destiny in towards Muva. They get the kill on him. Shushi now going to have to run. He's got no mana. He does have blue buff though, so he's going to be regening enough here to get that body slam off and get himself to safety. But still, one death for four kills for the Wolves. A great trade in the end. Bjergsen, he did need to go into the back right there to really go for that kill onto Mover, but, you know, yeah, he gave up his killing spree, but he gave them a turret now because of that, and they're going to just completely climb up in this Goldie that they've already been far ahead in. Yeah, I'm not sure if Shushi can really stay around for this one. Let's see, as I said, with that blue up, he is regenerating fast enough to throw a couple of barrels out here and there as he tries to belly slam God Bro, and he just shadow dashes away from it not wanting to get in there um so where does that leave us after that fight then 23.7 to 19,000 gold, 9-2 in kills. Um, and they, after that, got spread around really nicely. Ash got four assists out of that encounter. Two kills for Shen, two kills for Jarvan as well. Yeah, you're saying, where does that leave us? It leaves us with an Infinity Edge on Ash. It leaves us with an almost Aegis onto uh, Sven Scarion and a Sunfire Cape crit on Godbro. Like, that fight right there just gave him so many more completed items that they can afford to go back into another major team fight. And we also have the Sheen picked up on Bjergsen, so we will be going for that Lich Bane to go for some really good split push pressure. Not to mention just the pure damage that Lich Bane gives you. Now the Wolves are pushing towards the final outer turret that remains. There's the ulti coming out of Shushe. And that will stop them at least for now being able to push this outer turret down the rest of the Dragonborn's team's kind of digging in there, but Copenhagen Wolves are right now invading the Dragonborn's jungle. They want to get rid of that red. And I'm thinking back to the North American game where it was, I think it was Complexity versus Dinitas on day one of the Super Week, where probably just one shot Scar so many times in the entirety of the game that Scar was forced to go with Zonia's, and even then, just a little bit too slow to hit that, that button. I'm curious to see how well the, the Twisted Fade Gragas matchup happens here and to see if Bjergsen does go for that item as well because you see right there, like, he gets put out of position with that barrel, it's gonna be very bad times for him. Well, we say that, you know, forced to go to Zonius, but actually a really great item anyway for Twisted Fate, especially when, you know, we've seen so many times that whole Twisted Fate Frog and last week. coming right into the back saying, ching, Zonius, uh, and you just all peeled off to try and get me. Uh, and the rest of the team just all close in on them. So we'll see how that one all works out. It looks like without Lich Bane, of course, will be our next item for Bjergsen. He's got that sheen in on top of his twin shadows that was completed earlier on. Um, so what else do we have going on? We've got, well, Twisted Face, Split Pushing. What a surprise. As well as That's Godbro. <laughs> so like we, we talked about, you know, the Copenhagen Wolves, their ability to split push with Bjergsen doing that on so many different champions. And he's just showing it again with his Twisted Fate. Like the Dragons, they have to deal with it. And as you see, they send one top to deal with Shen. They send two bottom because there's a giant mini wave and Hosun wants to get all that. But now their mid lane is potentially... Like, it's open, it's defenseless. I mean, yeah, you have Gragas and, and Nasus there, but if they all collapse on it really quickly, which looks like they're starting to head to, they can take that turret very quickly. Yeah, I'm already down to less than half HP. You can see Svenskren in the jungle once again as the Hulk shot goes off just to reveal things. I guess Hulk shot is one of the more underrated skills, in my opinion, on the AD character, because mm -hmm. you know, especially late game, the vision that you get from Hawkshot is actually quite ridiculous. Obviously, it does have a very long cooldown. Um, but also, you now it has its uses in the early game, especially with its passive. And you think of how many games that were like almost decided because of a face check, like in the beginning of the game, like level yeah. one. I mean, yeah, you don't want to take that as your first ability, but it gives you that ability to not face check and get just destroyed in a team fight. But yeah, like later on, if you don't have any words on it, Baron, just shoot the Hawkshot down, shoot the arrow, and you have two forms of sight eventually with that. It just gives you so much more control and it makes you feel more comfortable. Here we go, Twisted Fate coming up towards his top lane. Are they going to go in for it, or do they just want the tower? It looks like it's just the tower at this point. Varus is off to the side. Is Maluno going to get that wither down on Svenskren? Takes a couple of hits there. And Hosan will throw down the Hail of Arrows as well. 
He successfully defended that one, but it looks to me just a matter of time before Copenhagen Wolves finally get rid of either that inner turret in the top lane or the bottom lane or the outer turret on middle, which, as we said earlier, already down to less than half. Yeah, they're doing a, a great job right now. All they're doing is just keeping the pressure on in every single lane, and they're trying to take away as much jungle creep on top of that as well. So they're strangling any kind of gold income Dragonborns can get, and as we mentioned before, them not having any major completed items yet has hurt them in the fights, but it's only getting more one-sided for the Wolves. Yeah, God broke. Now got a good lead, almost 20 CS extra over Renekton. Renekton's died three times. He's at 205 though, so he's sailing along nicely with that one. Blasty one picked up for Twisted Fate. Dragas still with that needlessly large rod and the pickaxe. Uh, pickaxe? Wow, that'd be a turn up for the books. And the uh, AD cage Dragas. Lucky picks. <laughs> AD Dragas. I've seen it happen before. Um, yeah, but like once he gets his death cap and if he builds a void staff as the next item up from that, like he can do so much burst. He could potentially get the test down like in, in one full combo, assuming Defisio is not there to ult him or isn't quick enough to ult him with uh, the Lulu. So Godbro still waiting here on that top side. May try and have a bit of a dig at your Marto Cannon. And as I say, may try. He does go in for that one. But Dragon Wands are credit to them holding on to this middle lane. It's turning into you know, a little bit of a stale period. And that's because Copenhagen Wolves are just looking for that opening. They're searching for you know, Dragon Wands to be one man less than they should be in the middle. Or one of them leaving the top lane or maybe the bottom lane for a while. And then they'll make the move. Yeah, they're, they're, they want, instead of them making the play, they're making Dragon Wands make the mistake. Yeah. And then just capitalize off it. Which is not a bad strategy in any way. And they're going to keep going at that. I mean, the thing is, they're working at that, but they're also they're still split pushing the top lane. You see Godbro, he cannot be moved out of the lane unless you send multiple people up there to deal with him. And he's eventually going to get this turret down. I mean, it's slowly ticking away. And as time goes on, he's going to have more items because of all the split pushing. There's more damage just around the map in terms of all the turrets. And something's going to give. Like, something will give. That dam will break eventually. Yep, and Godbro actually did just back off as they lost sight of the Dragon Bones in the middle, but he's just going to be taking away golems after golems after golems, as waves are all pretty much his as well. The Yamato Cannon does now, however, have that Sunfire Cape, as we are going to see the Ash Arrow come flying through there, and in the end, it hits absolutely no one. <laughs> I was going to say, go cool, as it goes between people, but unfortunately it didn't hit. That's, that's the downside. Like. You always notice the or you always notice the arrows that Ash misses. Usually not the ones you hit yeah, unless they're true. completely long range. Um, but still, like it, it's on a relatively quick cooldown for Ash. It's up in another 60 seconds, um, and it was just like their big move. Like, hey, we'll finally go for an engage here. But since we missed it, let's just go back to split pushing. Let's just keep doing what's working so far. Well, I'm not really sure what they were 100% hoping for with that one too. Hit Nasus was pretty much the only yeah. target that they had there. I'm not sure that they would have been able to really follow that one up, but uh, worth a try at this stage for Cobain Wolves. Not really much to lose from something like that. As we see Twisted Fate just heading home there. Rabadon's death cap is now finished for Gragas, but there is the Lich Bane for Bjergsen. And I'm trying to look at this to see if Bjergsen could 1v1 Hosan with the items he has, and I don't think he's just quite there yet. But as soon as he will be. I mean, you see Dragon Me starting out for the Wolves. No one in Dragon Wars is even inside of this. The Fisio has an Oracle at 22 minutes, so he's denying even more vision to the uh, to Dragonborns. And that was just a very systematic, perfectly play or perfect play. It was like right out of a book. Yeah, nothing at all that Dragonborns could do about that one. And as you mentioned, the Oracle under Fisio really going to be starving the Dragonborns, which you now at, at this point they've got the waves pushed up on them, so they are getting you know decent amounts of farm. Uh, from that one, Renekton's actually pushed that top turret right back, which Godbro will say thank you very much. That's going to be three or four waves that I'm going to uh, be taking for free and then pushing right back onto your turret. Bjergsen doing a similar thing down the bottom. And we talked earlier about, you know, the Wolves, there, there is a downside their composition is that they kind of run out of damage. Like, if they start to fall behind, they're going to kind of stay behind unless they can get some nice picks. But we talked about Godbro, like, you usually kind of want to run someone that has a little bit of damage in the top lane, but He's actually bypassing that by going a Sunfire Cape and Trinity Force. I see Hosan get engaged on the bot lane. Yeah, we will see Bjergsen going in. Ultimate comes out of Hosan, and he's going to surely win this 1v1. Bjergsen backing away there. The arrow comes out. The minions are hitting him. And Bjergsen just realized, I think, that he can't quite 1v1 him yet. He's like, oh, okay, that didn't work out well. Um, but yeah, so it was a great play by Hosan to you know, pop the bear at the right time to stay alive. Very quick reactions. And as, as I was saying before, Godra, I mean, he's building towards a Trinity Force, I want to say, or Frozen Mallet, because they're going to need that little bit of damage. I see Monokan getting taunted here, but he is tanking up to survive this. Yeah, tanky enough, definitely. Got that Negatron Cloak in there now as well. On top, as so we are going to see Wolves making another play for this middle turret, but those pesky Gragas barrels are strong enough now to be wiping out wave after wave of minions. And there we go, Co-Playing Wolves finally saying, let's just get it. 
let's just not care about a couple of Gragas barrels and take the turret. That's exactly what they've done. And that gives them so much more freedom now to be moving around. We can probably expect, you know, with with Lulu in there just to get as many wards down as they can in this Dragonborn jungle and really seize control of the entire map. And not to mention hammer down this top uh, top turret. It's already down to half health at this point. Scott has just been hammering away to consistently this entire time. Or even from that, I mean, you force Yamato Ken to deal with them, but Dragonborns can't kill Godbro with like in a 1v1 situation. They have to send someone else up there. So if they do that, the Wolves could capitalize by taking that second middle tier tur uh, middle turret or have Bjergsen split push the bottom lane, which he's going down to do right now. What's the solution here for Dragonborns? It's obvious that they're getting, you know, kind of torn to pieces in different lanes. Uh, in terms of, I say torn to pieces in, in terms of, you know, pulled away from where they really want to be because of that split push in the top lane from Godbro, because of Bjergsen going down into the bottom lane and the need to defend that middle lane because, well, it's a middle lane after all. Um, what's the solution to that right now for Dragon Ball? I think you have to go for a really ballsy play. Like, you need to push out bottom so Bjergsen can't just get back to that turret right away and then maybe go for a five minute push on the middle lane because, you know, yeah, Bjergsen might be able to take that tier two turret, but you should be able to push quicker than him and Shen combined. And you could create an opportunity for stuff right there or force the wolves to back out. But we do see the gate type on Bjergsen. He gets caught. Yeah, he gets caught and tied down. But there is the Ash Arrow going out on towards Hosan. They're going to go straight in. But Svenskun taking a lot of damage. Wild Growth comes in. He puts Cataclysm down. He flashes away from the Cataclysm itself then, leaving Dragonborns in there. But Mover has picked up that kill onto him. And there is the Ghost. And here comes the Fat Man diving over the wall. Can he finish off though? Bjergsen is ticking very low. Will be finished off. Nice play. Coming out of Shushi. And now they're going to try and find Officio and by try I mean R and he is not going to escape from this one. Hosan snipes it down for the final kill. Three for zero. Is that the play you were just talking about Jason? It could have been. It could have been. <laughs> um, but you know we have to get credit to Yamato Cannon during that fight as we actually do see fight happening in the mid lane. The test getting very low. Yeah he's got to be really careful about this one. And, well he's not going to get away. I didn't spot Mahuno down on that bottom side. Got Yamato Cannon low but he's got plenty of armor and health and you know he's got a bit of regen in there as well and you look at Ash no lifesteal right now. Yeah, and so that was four kills straight for Dragonborns right there. A great play. They're going to get turret as well off of this. But you do have to give Yamato Cannon so much credit in that entire fight. Because Godbro, he backed away, trying to you know say, I need to ulti. I need to get down there as quick as possible. But Yamato Cannon sliced and diced through the minion wave. Sliced and diced two Shen stunned him to stop that. So he couldn't interact with the fight. Because that could have been a completely different fight if he did show up. Really well done by Dragonborns. And now that's why I was asking because it was it was all about you know Copenhagen Wolves. We were talking about Wolves are slowly but surely mm. taking down the turrets. And that's why I asked you, you know, what do they need to do at this point? And it looks like Dragonborns know what they have to do, just judging by uh, what we've just seen there. Copenhagen Wolves, I'm guessing after you know getting caught out by the enemy blue, probably going to go you know, step it back a little notch in terms of overconfidence and you know what they're going to do in terms of pushing through into the jungle. See, overconfidence. That's like the perfect word to use because they had the potential to disengage if they wanted. They had the Lulu slow, they had the Ash slow, and yet they wanted to go for that fight because they, they were just too confident that they could win it. And it ended up being four deaths for them. It gave Dragonborns a nice little bit of a lead. Or not a little, little bit of a lead, but it got him back in the game really quite well. Got him another turret, and that's just, that's just a, an unfortunate play out of Wolves. But oh. a great capitalization of Dragonborns. That's, I, I like to focus on that one. This aspect of it is we are going to see Hosan there tying down Bjergsen with the Chain of Corruption. Couldn't quite get the damage to get the kill, but He's going to force him to back away from that area. Is Mover going to go for anything? No, nope. Bjergsen will recall. And they could have probably got in there for that turret. Jarvan was coming across. There's a Hawk shot, which is instantly going to make Dragonborns back away. They're not going to want to get involved with Jarvan and Asher there. And you see how much that last fight affected the momentum that the Wolves had. Is that Dragonborns just completely turned it. And now they're being aggressive. They were pushing that top lane, trying to get that turret down when it's been the other way around. Godbro's been pushing that top lane the entire time. And they're starting to just be a little bit more aggressive, knowing, hey, you know, we, we got back in it. We can probably win some fights now easily. So you see Bjergsen catching Monokan here, but I don't think they have the damage to kill him. Oh, third of his health gone from that. And well, that was the volley and, and full combo coming out of Bjergsen. So definitely not quite enough to kill the crocodile at this stage. What other items have we seen coming in there? Seeker's arm guard down for Gragas, as there we see. Oh, don't see the dragon going down for the Copenhagen Wolves. But we can tell you, it is there. It is there. I promise you that. There it is, look. <laughs> so we see items being built up with the Phantom Dancer done for the test. So he's going for that kind of standard build for Ash. Most likely a Last Whisper next, since you're just going to sit on that Phantom Scepter uh, until Rhodes will be late in the game. We see Zonia's being built by both mid laners, as uh, Shushay already has this completed. Bjergsen's still working on his. 
The Trinity Force is now done for Godbro, so his damage just got amplified by quite a bit. And they see Yamana can go went for a Spirit Visage, so he wants that magic assist, wants extra healing off of his Q. And of course, Senskaren, he's going for that random Zomen. He wants to dive into the backside. He wants to slow host his attack speed, keep him out of the game for quite a while, and just allow Ash to eat, or just pretty much eat through their tanks when they try to go after him. That Trinity Force, of course, on, uh, on Godbro as well, going to be allowing him to go bit more aggressive and not always have to back away uh, when Yamato cannon, uh, cannon comes back onto him. So really interested to see now with now what looked like he could be a very one-sided game. I mean, he's still a strong lead team for Copenhagen Wolves, whichever way you look at it. But that last fight just showed us that the fights aren't going to be as clear-cut and Dragon Wolves can definitely get themselves right back into this game. We already seen a ward put down by the Wraiths. The Wolves were taking the Wraiths away as that happened. And the thing is, Joe, the Wolves still can back up to their Slipper strategy, which they're doing yet again. You have even Shen and, the Twi and Twisted Fate grouping up together to push this bottom turret, and that's not going to last very long. You do have Hosen coming on the side, but he might get caught here as the rest of the Wolves are heading over towards the bottom lane. Yeah, he's going to have to go top side. Obviously, couldn't come uh, from behind there. He would have been destroyed by Shen with a uh, taunt in there and the stun card coming out as the ghost just chasing around there towards Hosen. And that's another, I think, underrated um, point of the ghost as well. Just to use them as scouting material. Yes, I mean, it's just like a hawk shot. You have so much vision around the map, you don't have to face check anything right there. And speaking of vision, Take a look at Dragonboard's board coverage right now. They have five boards down around Baron. Like, they're really trying to stop any potential take of it. Because the Wolves, they're tanky enough to take it right now if they want. Ash has the damage he needs. It's just going to take him a little bit of time. So with that control, they're, they're not allowing Wolves to pick up the Baron and then go for, like, a straight 5-on-5 five -five fight. But they are contesting the blue buff again. We saw it happen last time. Will it happen again? Well, not quite the same, but Shushe throws the ultimate in there. Says, thank you very much. You're not taking it away this time. And he gets his blue buff. So the Wolves... Losing out on that little uh, encounter, but are they going to go for a fight? They're pushing straight through as we are going to see the Hulk shot revealing as the arrow is going to go flying straight through the middle of them. And as you said earlier, we only really see the misses. Yamato Cannon, though, has got caught out here inside of the jungle. He got stunned up. He got taunted up. He's going to get popped there by Bjergsen. And it, it takes a while for him to go down as there's kills going off all over the place. Swiss and Fate coming in at the backside. Stun on towards Mover. Wild card's going to come through. That's the base damage that they need. And now Hosan trapped inside of the Cataclysm. Nice oh. uh, Shentong coming in. Wild Growth goes down. Zonya's used by Shushe. But is he going to be able to get away? He flashes over the wall. Will body slam away. But Svenskren is chasing. There's a flag toss landing onto him as well. But Shushe going very low. Finished off by Bjergsen. Maluno turns over onto Svenskren. Stan United used, and Maluno is pretty tanky, but I'm not sure with all this crowd control that he's going to be able to walk away from this one. He turns around again to go for Svenskren, but that will be an ace, a 5 for 1 there for the Copenhagen Wolves. So that fight started out with, with completely Yamanokan getting caught out. And the thing is, he doesn't have Merc Treads, so the stuns, the taunts are lasting full duration on him, and he just got obliterated in the entire time of that. So we saw that happen first off. And then we saw Maluno just sitting around the backside trying to attack as much as possible as to see. Monokan going in, we'll get back to that in a second. Well, he stunned the slow. And the slow is basically a snare, we know that. <laughs> if you, for the people that have ever played against Lulu and screamed at her when she slows you uh, forever. Uh, and there is Godbro pushing through on towards that middle turret as well. So in a turret, it's down in the middle lane, in the bottom lane. Top lane is still there, ironically, after uh, Godbro spent so much time pushing that one down. It's definitely not. Uh, very high on health points right now. And we're seeing some more big items coming down. So I'll just run them down quickly. Uh, but that middle lane is really where the importance is right now. The Zonya's Hourglass picked up for Twisted Fate, who has just, just used, used it. it for fun in the jungle just to test that he's working. <laughs> it's working. The Hourglass is working, everyone. We know that now. Uh, Bjergsen just wanted to be careful with that one. Uh, but Gragas, on the other hand, we've seen that he also has that one in there with the Rabidons. I think it's the Banshee's Veil is the really key pickup for the test because we saw Hosen actually 1v1 him in that last fight. But with that Benji's Veil, it's going to stop that proc of Blight, at least one of the procs of it, or even the Chain of Corruption, even the ultimate out of Gragas to stop that. Um, we just see Baron starter right now. We do have a ward for Dragonborns, but Shushe's in the bottom lane right now. He's not in position to stop this, and the Wolves do have the damage to take it, but will they have that smite? That's what the Wolves are going for with this one. Svenskrim does have smite available. Five versus four. So we see the Q coming through from Hosa. Not going to be enough to get that one for them. And now the Copenhagen Wolves going on the offensive. There's the Twin Shadows coming out. Won't actually really get much of it. Slow the least down, but the Repel made sure that Movet was already away from danger in that one. Copenhagen Wolves not able to turn that into kills, but Baron's a Baron.
Yeah, that was actually that was an amazing repel because he, he used it to get away from the twin shadows and then he hopped to the red buff to get away. So he's just like walking away. That would have been a death for him completely if he didn't go for that. And that probably could have been an inhibitor turret off that as well. But now, yeah, Baron Dub, Copenhagen Wolves, they're pushing down this middle lane. They have great clear of waves. They have great damage with that Lich Bane on a Twisted Fate. They might even buy, uh, they might be able to take this, but they also might be able to split push, take that top turret. Well, the pings did indicate that they want to do that. Bjergsen is the one that backs away, and Dragonborn's using that to push that middle lane out as far as they possibly can. Obviously, it's easier when it's all the way up to the turret for the Copenhagen Wolves to be getting in with that one. Now, Twisted Fate is moving straight through this top lane. You can see how quickly Bjergsen eats through that line of minions. There's a hawk shot just to reveal pretty much the entire Dragonborn's team. Bjergsen coming in towards that top turret. Now, Gragas might actually get sandwiched in here. Turret finally goes down, and this is where it gets really hard for the Dragonborns to deal with that split push ability that the Copenhagen Wolves have. And the thing is, if they want to go in and pretty much stop it, they have to force like an engage. They have to go 5v4 and try to blow someone up as quick as possible. But, you know, you have Bjergsen who might be split pushing, might be there, has a Zonius. You have the Tess who has a Banshee's Veil. It's going to be relatively hard to do that, but it is always possible. And God, bro, we, we didn't talk about him for a while, but he's full zero eight 8 right now. Like, his taunts in those last fights Phenomenal. were why they really locked it up as well as they did. Uh, he's just picked himself up a Spirit Visage now to add in. Is the Ash Arrow going to land here on towards Mover? Gets knocked up. He's going to repel there just about, uh, but he's going to die as soon as he comes back down. The Cataclysm used in the middle of the fight. Here comes Twisted Fate. Where's he going to go? Towards Shushe. Yamato Cannon is very low. He will be finished off by Ash in the end, and that is three kills for nothing. Copenhagen Wolves not finished just yet. Twisted Fate on the top side will get hit there. Well, the sh Twin Shadow chasing him through the jungle. Can Bjergsen land this stun card? Actually, Hosan's kept running. Bjergsen is... Oh, his he stun has card just run out. And <laughs> he's got to think twice about that one. Hosan's going to be recalling right in the middle of him. Bjergsen can't go aggressive on him there. And they're like, well, let's just forget him. Let's go towards <laughs> the inhibitor. And you know we talk about the ash arrows missing, you notice those more, but it all it takes is one great ash arrow to land. As you start with their hit mover, yep. able to pick up those three kills, able to pick up an inhibitor turn off of that. Well, so actually, matter of fact, two of them, and maybe even two inhibitors. And a great play out of Godbro as well. He backed, he had home guard boots, so he ulted in and just zoomed right into the middle of that fight, landed the taunt, and also the uh, the bench off the test was an MVP right there. He didn't get hit by the Gragas Barrel at all, that ultimate. Yeah, we saw their uh, Maluno managing to defend the inhibitor for now. With those home guards uh, on. Bit of a whippet he is coming out of the uh, fountain there, which us northerners, we love our whippets. I'm like, I, I have probably no not idea what get that, that one means. at all, but uh, it's a dog, Jason, a fast oh, okay. one. <laughs> <laughs> um, so. <laughs> Where are we at? Yeah, the, the, the rumor is that all us Northern English guys, we like to race uh, whippets in our spare time. I can confirm, though, I don't have a whippet. Only. Anyway, let's move away from whippets and get back into the game. With 36 minutes in, a 10 kill advantage for Copenhagen Wolves. We have two inhibitor turrets down. One inhibitor itself, of course, the bottom inhibitor right now is completely open for the taking. And the top inhibitor turret is the only turret that left standing. And the real dangerous thing is you have two people who could backdoor. You have Twist Fate who could just ulti into that, that bottom inhibitor and take it down very quickly with that Lich Bane. And we might have Bjergsen potentially going for his own Xpeka here. Maybe he wants to show since Frogan already did it last week. He wants to show everyone he can do it. But he's the one the top lane at Shusha and he will be able to pick up this kill most likely. Ulti Barrel comes down there, but look at the damage onto Shusha. Bjergsen did spot that Elise was there and didn't want to get cocooned up and end up falling down. And Gragas is just going to recall there at the back of his teammates. Bjergsen, he's going to get hit by the cocoon in the end. And well, he's not escaping this one now. We're we going to see Svenskrun coming off to the side. Bjergsen gets a wild growth and the Zonya's down. Mover is going to fall. Wild cards coming through. Ash Arrow was a little bit too late there. They were already running away, but the slow from Lulu and the damage coming out will be enough to finish off Renekton. And there is another flash taunt from Godbro. Svenskrun coming in from the backside as well. Have they got the damage? Well, Luno gets stunned up. Hosan is very low. He's finished off by uh, Bjergsen. And now Maluno is going to be concentrated on here. Just a couple more hits will be enough to finish him off. He's knocked up and it's a double kill for Bjergsen in the end. The test was even thinking about going for Gragas. Well, that's inhibitor number two down. Copenhagen Wolves not the healthiest after that, but they've probably got enough uh, health between them to tank this one up. Plus the Gragas ulti not really in the right position, but 
Just these barrels are going to be a cause for concern here. The wolves taking down that first Nexus turret. The super minions are coming in. Gragos comes flying off from the main, and they are going to go into that Nexus. And the Copenhagen Wolves going to finish off here and take down the Dragon Balls. And that was phenomenal play out of the Wolves in general. You really have to give credit to Godbro and Sven Skarinis. Multiple times during these entireties of the fights, they would actually body block Gragas, so he couldn't get around. He couldn't like escape in any sort of the way, and they really locked him down to pick up those kills. Great job by Wolves, and also, Dragon Wars played that quite well. I mean, they did get back in the game and finally turn it around, but unfortunately, it just was a little bit too late.